I'm back, back and back again with part two of the Not 100 Videos contest results. This category was originally going to be called Fine Art, and consist of paintings and ultra-detailed drawings, but there was too much crossover so now it's just part two. Anyway, enough of this comically hideous title text, which is a default setting unbelievably, and on with the pretty pictures! Thomas in Banbury used up several byros to create this nightmarish mashup of references. Love the subscription button in the top left. In fact, I'm going to activate it. There we go! He also provided this colourful scene of tentacled nastiness. Adam from Preston gives us this assault on a floating pop station, where Chef Excellent seems to be trying to catch it in a stay fresh bag. Tragically, this entry was damaged in the post, but its beauty still shines through. Or something. Angela from Virginia, USA sent in this disturbingly realistic portrayal of me being hassled by the nightmare demon against a background of monsters from the widescreen warning video. I agree with Chef Excellence's comment, and as a result, there's a spot prize DVD for this entry. Connor in Lakenheath shows us a handful of horrors which have oozed out from behind the brown sofa. My favourite is Chef Not So Much Excellence, who looks like a tired gnome. I know how he feels. Melissa in Canada provides the only entry to be painted on canvas. Notice the heart after my name, which is ironic because I don't have one. Holly in Edinburgh imagines what a poster for a movie about the Sad Onion would be like. Poor little chaps being banned in his own rainy reflection. On the plus side though, he has better trainers than I do. Aaron in Texas gives a fairly accurate representation of why I haven't slept in the last four years. I wonder how many British viewers are looking at that expression and thinking, I hate you, butler. Adam from somewhere in the UK plants the horrifying thought that a spider walking nosy bonk is my father, and also an alternative rendering in case we weren't quite terrified enough yet. There's even nosy bonk on the envelope! Frankly, he's trying too hard, which is why he doesn't win a DVD. All right then, he wins a DVD. Happy now? Atom Bat in Leeds sent in this beautiful rendering of me having a battery shoved up my arse by some pop stations. It's not actually explicit, but I've had to pixelate it out as YouTube can be funny about that sort of thing. I'll put an unaltered copy up on my website. Chet in Connecticut, USA seems to imply that Monkey hitting his head on a tree wasn't an accident, as I stand eerily behind him. There's a genuinely spooky look to this painting. I approve. Madeline in Virginia, USA shows a nautical showdown between an arm-wielding Chef Excellence and Quincy the Caterpillar. I love that the chef is hiding inside his vignette for protection. Also, Splink! 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 Leon in Philadelphia, USA has made me look very young in this picture, so I like him a lot. Then I saw the second picture he sent. Hmm. Alex in Essex pictures me about to blow up a pop station factory. Good to see I'm wearing a hard hat for safety. He sent in a letter saying that he may use this for extracurricular credit on his art course, so if there are any teachers watching, please give him a good mark. He's studying art so will end up terminally unemployed, and that good mark may be his last happy memory. Jan and Robin Tamworth show me about to assassinate the Conan-like King Tat with extreme prejudice. Then I'll have to fight off his trident-wielding sad onion guards. Is there a spot prize DVD for this one? Why, yes sir! And finally, it's the winner of this category! Arfan in Wales pushes all the right buttons with this tremendous mock-up cover of a fictional Spectrum game called Stuart Ashen's Poundland Peril. The only inauthentic thing about this picture is that real Spectrum game covers were never this well drawn. Congratulations Arfan, you win this fake PSP that plays old Nintendo games. I was going to review it, but somebody sent me a more pop station-y version so you can have this one. You also get a DVD, and Bully's special prize, a LEGO Samurai. So that's it for part two. Join me for part three, where I'll be looking at sculptures and other mixed media entries. Until then... POTATO!